don't think it's too much. They don't. Yeah. 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 This is a meeting of the Township Committee, May 15, 2017. The notice requirements provided for in the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given by transmission to the Star Ledger, the Independent, and the True Bird Times, and by posting at the Middletown Township Municipal Building, and filing with the Township Clerk on January 5, 2017. Committeeman Fiore. Here. Committeeman Cassell. Here. Committeeman Sanabrino. Here. Deputy Mayor Murray. Here. Mayor Schaffenberger. Here. Please rise with the pledge of Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence to honor the troops serving worldwide, defending our freedoms, constitutions, and way of life. Tonight's agenda, we have a Certificate of Appreciation and Proclamations. Uh, our first item, actually, we have the uh, Mayors for the Day, the recognition of the 2017 Mayors for a Day. We have so Sophia Quintano of, of Lincroft Elementary School, Noah Cook of Middletown Village Elementary School, and Troy Mitzvai of Nutswamp Elementary School. Proclamation. I just want to say, we get to do a lot of interesting things up here. This is by far the most heartwarming thing I've done in a long time. Uh, we've spent, I guess, the last two hours together uh, with these young, uh, young lady and the young men. And I don't want to use the word cute, they're beyond that. They are so smart. I actually read the oath of office and words like faithfully and impartially, they're reading ahead of me. Who no idea is in the first grade. It, it is mind boggling, but it was, it was adorable and uh, really Smart. just a great thing to see. And I hope they got something out of it. I hope this is something that they'll take with them for the rest of their life and remember that they did this and maybe spark an interest in public service or at least being aware of what goes on in their community. And uh, they're off to a great start. We're very proud of them.
Now, therefore, I, Mayor Jerry Schaffenberger, and the Middletown Township Committee, wish to thank Mayors Cook, Mitsui, and Quintano of Middletown, uh, it says the schools, for their service as mayor for a day. Thank you, guys. If you do this
And the fire alarms hadn't gone off yet because it was burning on the outside of the house. As we know, fuck smoke detectors are on the inside. Uh, so they weren't even aware that the house was on fire. So if, I used to not, if you hadn't stopped and lent a hand and alerted them, who knows where this could have went, okay? Um, again, by us getting this early alert, we were able to get out, get some lines inside the building, knock down the fire from the outside, and that uh, turned out to be what we consider a pretty good job with minimal amount of damage to the house. So not, if it wasn't for your, your actions and taking the initiative, not just to call 911, but to get the people out, um, you know, things could have been a lot differently. So that, that's how we saw it. And uh, so I'm really happy that the, the township committee is uh, taking this uh, action to give you guys an award. And it's really nice to see that, you know, sometimes when people are thinking about the, the children, the young people, um, you're a little bit older than you, but close to your age, saying, oh, these kids today, all they do is run around and talk on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. But you did what you're supposed to do. And uh, you made a difference to the residents. And, uh, you know, by doing the right thing, you're really nice and uh, happy to acknowledge that. Do you guys want to add anything from your, what you saw and what, what you thought was going through your mind? Quiet. This was a part of the deal. We, we say it lies, we don't talk about it. Anyway, we are so proud of you. And you know what? You have a couple of choices. Like, oh, I'm not getting involved, you know, somebody else is falling in. And who knows what would have happened, but you guys stepped up. So that's really a, a, a big credit to you. And you know, just goes to show. It's a, Press into it, you made the right decision, not the easy one. So that's great. Uh, what I'm going to do, I have four certificates here. They're identical, but I'm going to read the names uh, Savannah Raposa, uh, Melanie Han, Lisa Han, and Steve Raposa. Did I get that name right? Okay. Uh, this certificate is awarded to those individuals by the Middletown Township Committee in recognition of your efforts to rescue a couple from their burning home. Your brave, selfless actions make you a fitting recipient of the Middletown Township Life-Saving Award. You are an inspiration to us all. We are very proud of you, and thank you for what we did. Thank you.
Аллах на себя. Seeing all members of the public come forward, move to close the public portion and move for adoption. Second. Commander Fury. Yes. Commander Mansell. Yes. Commander Senator Brino. Yes. Deputy Mayor Murray. Yes. Mayor Schaffenberger. Yes. Motion carries passes for ordinance on second and final reading. Our next ordinance for public hearing. We have ordinance 2017-3197. An ordinance adopting redevelopment plan for block 137, lots 2.07, 3, 5, 6, and 7, block 281, lots 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 15, block 306, lots 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 66, 110, 122, 123, 130, 131, 132, 135, 136, 137, 138, 139, 140, 141, 142, 143, 144, 169, 170, 171, and 172. Block 319, Lot 1, Block 320, Lot 1, Block 321, Lot 1, Block 322, Lot 1, Block 323, Lot 1, Block 324, Lot 1, and Block 325, Lot 1, on the official tax map of the Township of Middletown. Okay, now we're going to have the presentation first. Okay, just a lot of are setting up. So, uh, this is the uh, second redevelopment uh, plan done at the Township of Middletown. The first one was uh, uh, two years ago now in Middletown. Uh, this was the Belfry area of redevelopment plan. It involved a number of meetings with stakeholders, interested property owners, uh, interested people in the community participated in the meetings to uh, come to a consensus on a uh, redevelopment plan that I think everyone thought was the right way to go. So with that, TNN Associates um, prepared the plan. And I should also mention that this uh, was made possible by a grant that we received from the state, uh, the post-Sandy planning grant. So a component of this it's not just redevelopment, but it's redevelopment with uh, storm resiliency uh, taken into account. And, uh, we have all those lot and lots just to give us enough time to <laughs> set up. So that is, uh, uh, good evening. Stan Slavka from TNM Associates. We're the uh, planning consultants that, uh, that worked on the uh, redevelopment plan. We also did the, the redevelopment study. Uh, I here have with me uh, Jeffrey Cucinato, uh, who is a planner from TNF Associates, and, and also uh, uh, Jeff uh, played the lead role in, uh, in working on the, uh, the project. Uh, Tony did a very good job in terms of uh, summarizing uh, the context, and uh, I do, do want to emphasize that there was a substantial amount of uh, public input uh, through the stakeholders in the uh, community, charrette and community uh, visioning meetings that we had, and I think that, that it's reflected uh, in the uh, in the plan, the plan itself uh, covers or addresses a 400 uh, plus acre uh, area of the township uh, centered, centered around the uh, Port Belford Ferry. Uh, and given the size and given the number of, uh, of land uses and different issues and concerns, uh, it was in fact a very a very very complex plan to uh, to, to prepare. But through the public input that we received, we were able to address some key uh, components of it. Uh, it is focused on sustainability and resiliency uh, to help uh, the area uh, both recover from and also the develop in the manner uh, that uh, is going to be resilient so that to the extent that we do have investments taking place in this area that in fact uh, they are going to be uh, designed in a manner that's resilient to uh, the future storm events similar to Superstorm Sandy um, in terms of storm surge. In fact, actually one of the things that we did in plotting out the various land uses uh, in the area was uh, consider uh, the areas of storm surge, uh, consider the flood hazard areas, and, 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 and design the project, design the proposed plan in a way that, uh, that, that uh, in fact, uh, accommodated or, or addressed those, those areas. And I think that uh, that 
also going to help in the, uh, in the future uh, resilience of the area. Uh, one of the other hallmarks of this plan is to provide for a uh, significant level of investment and also a significant level of, you know, of flexibility. And I'll highlight just uh, um, some of the key points in it, and, and obviously if the uh, council members have a uh, question or concern, uh, we can uh, address that. Um, there are three main areas and other sub-areas within, uh, within the redevelopment plan area. As I mentioned, that it's about 400 acres or so in, in size. Uh, and we're, we're focusing on the three uh, primary areas that, that, that was of our particular focus. Uh, as you may be aware, the county uh, does own a significant amount of property in the area, uh, and specifically they own property which the uh, where the Port Belford Ferry is located, as well as the associated uh, parking lot. Uh, that area is, uh, is one of the prime areas and, and one of the core focuses of the redevelopment plan. And what we're proposing for uh, that area is a mix of land uses, which include both public components, uh, it also includes a parking deck for uh, the parking for, and, uh, and significant parking for the uh, the use of the ferry and, and future uses with the, within the area. That was one of the key concerns that came out of the, uh, uh, the, pro the, the community vetting process and working with stakeholders, making sure that we had um, adequate parking for all the uses and also adequate parking to ensure the opportunities for expansion of the, uh, of the ferry in, in the future. Uh, as I mentioned, it provides some level of flexibility. We have an area which we've identified for seafood market, uh, retail flex space, which would give uh, an opportunity for the uh, uh, members of the seafood co-op uh, to sell their wares, uh, sell fresh fish, as well as uh, provide other opportunities for uh, green grocers and, and other uh, uh, green market type of, uh, uh, type of uh, uses and sales in the area. And uh, by providing a, a general flex space uh, in, the, in that area, that, uh, they can, that area can be designed uh, to maximize uh, the use for certain types of events, certain types of uh, certain times of the year. So that's a key component of the uh, of the area. We, as I said, we have open space. Uh, we have uh, proposed retail restaurants, uh, mixed use, which would include a residential component uh, adjoining the uh, boulevard that would come up to the uh, uh, to the ferry building. And in addition, we have additional civic spaces, not only allow for public space, uh, but we're looking at a, a community center. Uh, that could be also very flexible in its use um, as a museum use, um, as a community meeting room, uh, and other types of educational uses that uh, both the Middletown community and the greater region uh, within the county uh, can, uh, can use. Uh, we also have an opportunity for an interpretive center, which has been part of the county plans for, uh, for that area. We also have an area for a potential health court in the future, uh, which we think uh, provides for kind of a combination of transportation uh, type uses. So this is obviously the area of parking uh, and the county of property at this location is one of the key components, really the kind of driving force of the, uh, of the overall redevelopment of the area. There will also be linkages to the other, other areas of the uh, redevelopment plan and one of the most significant linkage, linkages we're proposing is a pedestrian, uh, pedestrian bridge over the Compton Creek that would bind the eastern side and, and the western side of the uh, Compton Creek and provide opportunities for uh, connections, pedestrian connections to new residential development as well as um, the, uh, the seafood co-op and the other uses that are beneficial uses on the other side of, of the Compton Creek. That's where we're from. And uh, here's some sketches that, uh, that are included in the plan uh, that show certain types of uh, open space uses. Again, the idea is flex uh, flexibility. The idea is to give a concept and give a, uh, a starting point for the development of these types of uh, um, spaces within the overall redevelopment area. But one of the important uh, aspects, looking at this particular public space, which, which would be adjoining a retail resident a restaurant use, would be providing for a pedestrian plaza for uses on, on, on a daily basis, and also an amphitheater raised stage for public performances, uh, right by the uh, right by the Bay Shore, and, uh, and then 
make entrance into the adjoining sort of natural beachfront in that in that area. So there would be this area, this area would be also very flexible in its use, but really would be providing I think, a very profound and very important public space for the residents of a uh, uh, middle uh, Middletown township. Then we have another sketch showing uh, open space elements that would be across further uh, away uh, from the mixed use development. We provide for retail uses on the ground floor, residential up on the uh, upper floor. And by the way, we noted as I mentioned before, we were focused on this being very uh, resilient, and this is an area. Um, of the site that actually is outside the uh, flood area, so we provide a lot of development opportunities here. That also would enjoy enjoying the seafood market, uh, the flex space that I mentioned before, and also join the community center that I also mentioned. Before. So it'd be an important binding public space, and then, then we have the pedestrian uh, linkage across the, the across the continent. The next really important component, and again, I'm going to highlight the really major components. There are other sub areas, other sub areas that we can, we can discuss later. Uh, the other uh, area is the area of the seafood co-op, and where the existing um, uh, uh, fishing uses, uh, seafood uses, are, are, are located. Uh, there's also some, some lighter industrial uses in this, this area as well. The idea here is flexibility. The idea here is to, uh, and again, so a lot of this is coming from public feedback, uh, recognizing this area as being um, a, a maritime use, but looking at opportunities for improvement in the near future uh, through incentives, or whether tax abatements uh, that uh, provide incentives for improvements, facade improvements uh, for the uh, existing uses that are located uh, uh, along Compton Creek. In addition, uh, we're looking at a proposed adaptive reuse, reuse of the net house uh, which is in very, very poor condition, uh, and the idea would be to use that for potentially a variety of different uses. Um, also, a, uh, a structure of the building that could be located to provide for uh, further support and enhancement of the, uh, of the uh, seafood uses uh, in, uh, in, in the area, uh, and uh, building upgrades, rehab, facade uh, improvements for the, uh, the seafood co op building, as well as the other uses. In area and uh, a reestablishment of dining use at that location. In addition to providing for incentives for improvement, and again, for the, with its recognition of the maritime uh, uh, industry as being a key component of the Port Belford area, uh, the, the, there would also be an overlay zone that would be provided on this site and provide some additional flexibility if the seafood co-op co or other property owners wanted to develop it in a, in a manner different than it is developed now, if they would have the opportunities to develop it in a mixed use uh, type of development, mixed retail or uh, other types of uses, or as I said, some uh, some combination of the existing seafood uses with the with, with improvements. In addition, property immediately to the uh, to the west of the, the uh, co-op property uh, would be uh, developed or proposed to be developed with a new multi family residential development and we're not designing we don't have a specific design in mind but we, we showed a couple of suggested you know approaches one could be a single building uh, there could be multiple buildings located uh, at, on that site but what, mo mo most importantly uh, we would anticipate that there would be the redevelopment plan calls for uh, a buffer area between the new development and the a significant buffer area uh, to the uh, to the bay shore, to the beach uh, beachfront, uh, uh, re reconstruction of the seawall uh, over most of the length of the uh, of the, uh, the the uh, site, which is under, being undertaken by the, by the county. Uh, a resident, a buffer between the existing residential development immediately to the west and any you know, development, and providing linkages. And I mentioned that that uh, pedestrian bridge over the uh, uh, over the Compton Creek. Uh, there would be enhancements uh, for pedestrian crossings at, that, uh, at the intersection uh, that immediately adjoins to this property and then linkages into the uh, into the waterfront area. So there'd be through this area here and a continuation 
the pedestrian bridge and into further linkages into some of the natural areas uh, immediately to the east of the, the parking area. Uh, there would be a kind of continual uh, connection with uh, the, the Bay Shore and the natural features in the area. Um, and again, this was just that uh, we put a couple of different renderings uh, showing some examples, but, but obviously there could be a number of different uh, options that could be developed. Uh, And then finally, looking at the overall uh, area, we try to maximize or look at opportunities where we would have uh, pedestrian linkages, bikeways, linkages into some of the uh, natural areas on the, in the eastern side. Most of the most of the eastern portion of the redevelopment area, which is highlighted in yellow, would be in, in its natural state. The idea would be to uh, take advantage of that uh, and create uh, opportunities for record passive recreation uh, immediately joining the uh, new development. Um, and uh, there is also recognition of some of the existing uses, some of the other areas, uh, some of the existing commercial uses um, at the end of this point. Center, at the end of Center Avenue, um, and then uh, some existing, existing multifamily uh, proposed uh, affordable housing project are also incorporated and recognized as part of the part of the redevelopment. Mm -hmm. The idea here would be to provide, and the ordinance provides for, the plan provides for a mix of implementation approaches, uh, including uh, in some areas, there would be, as I mentioned, overlay in some uh, zoning, in some areas there would be zoning would supersede the area, and, and probably most significantly and most importantly with the implementation of this, this plan, that there needs to be, and we anticipate there being <coughs> fairly significant uh, cooperation and coordination Monmouth County uh, and the township, because obviously one of the key areas is owned by the county. Uh, we've had meetings with the county, I got input from them uh, and incorporated some revisions into the plan uh, because of the input that we had received uh, from, from the county. Um, that's a really high level overview of the, of the plan. Uh, I do want to say <coughs> in the last note, is, as mentioned by Tony, uh, this is this was funded by a grant from the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. Uh, we did receive um, a confirmation uh, from the Department of Community Affairs that, uh, in fact, the, uh, the components of the plan uh, are uh, consistent with the scope of work from uh, that that were required pursuant to the grants from the PCAS sign sign off on it. They have they have, did not sign off on the substantive recommendation because obviously that's in the purview of the township committee, but. But we have a confirmation that we uh, did, in fact, meet the uh, uh, scope of work as required under the grant agreement. Okay, good. Thanks, Dan. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just want to point out this is really just uh, to give a sense of the uh, ordinance that we're going to be voting on in a minute. And I also want to point out that this is really just conceptual. This is nothing that's etched in stone that's going to be moving forward. Would you say that, Sam? Some plans can be very, very detailed in terms of the design standards and requirements. Uh, this plan, because it's the broad the scope of this plan, uh, and the need for some level of flexibility, and all the different parties that are need to be involved in the implementation, this is designed in a way uh, that is conceptual in nature. Uh, it, gives, it still would give the, the township the authority that they need, once they adopt the plan, to fully implement the plan. I would anticipate this being done in phases, and then as each phase, as each specific plan or project comes before the township, then there's an opportunity to get into the details and specifically define it and hone it to make sure that it meets the vision of the plan. Okay, thanks, Dan. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, otherwise I'll open up for the public. Okay. Um, are there any members of the public who would like to speak to the ordinance in a uh, time now? Ordinance number 2017 3197. Yes, sir.
questions also. Um, looking at um, figure four here, it's an aerial view of the um, ferry parking lot, <coughs> and comparing it with figure five.
reason also why we designed this flex space here, because mm -hmm. that location is BFA's path. The idea would have that as a platform elevated with the, with the, uh, with the covering, mm -hmm. and uh, then we would have uh, very, very minimal impact if we had a similar service. Like that. So, this middle green area, that would be more like a uh, retention basin? Yeah, the bigger participation. Yeah.
what I'm saying in a general sort of way, right. I'm not specific on the phase, okay. but given the level of complexity that you have and this, this kind of plan, I would anticipate that it would probably take a number of years before this plan is really fully. Okay, so even speaking of just the main general area where the parking structure, the retail, the flex space, all that would be, that's just years before they even break ground on it? Or if, I, if somebody said, okay, go tomorrow, your estimate would be two years, five years, so 20 years? Yeah, if somebody said go tomorrow, I mean, it's all dependent on the, the level and the impact of construction, how quickly they can construct it. There's a lot of things that have to take place before you can even say you get to go. And as I mentioned, the county is involved so that they are going to be fully engaged in, in, uh, in any discussions or dialogue
Right. So, and so, so, so that, that that's a that's a fantastic program, and it gives uh, those students the ability to see what's uh, what will be forthcoming in uh, in the municipality. But I also want, want to talk about the uh, the Port of Belford redevelopment plan. I'm going to answer uh, uh, Mr. Watson's concern. The question becomes: Look, when is this going to get done? Right? And I will tell you, it, it'll happen certainly before all the young mayors here who sit as an actual <laughs> that, that I can guarantee. You. That's all I have to see. Why is that? Uh, why is that, Smith? Uh, Mr. Fiore, you're up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a few things. Uh, one, I, I just uh, will also comment on the Port of Belford. I mean, clearly that has been a project that uh, this municipality has looked on, looked at for probably a dozen years or more uh, in the past, and it's great to see the vision starting. And while I do believe that there will be many changes and iterations of a you know, before the Port of Belford is ever completed, there will probably be many changes and thoughts and developers and ideas. And, and look, that's the that's the uh, the nature of any development, right? Especially a long term, long scale type project. And to uh, also echo Committeeman Macell's comments, the ability for us to get this right or for even a future township committee to get this right will have a tremendous economic benefit on the township of Middletown and the surrounding Bayshore area. So um, while I think we all hope this could get done tomorrow, we I think are realistic that you have to start somewhere. And I think this is a, a very good start and I look forward to uh, to continuing the journey, uh, whether this committee's there or a future committee's there or the mayors of the day are there at that point, um, it, it will be great to uh, it will be great to see this project in fruition because the one thing I can guarantee you is uh, I plan on being on Middletown quite a long time, uh, so I look forward to this uh, whether it's tomorrow or someday. Um, Second thing, you know, also the, you know, on that subject, the uh, the Mayor of the Day program, as uh, my colleagues have mentioned, that was a program that we implemented a few years ago now, right? I think it's probably three or four years ago, if I'm not mistaken. And it's one that I believe is a tremendous opportunity and program that we do with the uh, school community and just the ability for us to interact with the youth up here. And I know the Elks do a great job with this too, with their youth uh, youth activities week and um, their, their volunteer service uh, for the youth uh, that they do. But it's just great to see the, uh, to, to have that ability to, to have uh, young leaders or leaders of the future have the, the ability to spend some time with the governing body. Look, I, I'm pretty confident that uh, for all the years we do this and future committees will do this, uh, there's going to be somebody who's going to come through that program who's going to say, I was the mayor of the day once, uh, once too. So uh, I think that would be a really great thing. So with that, Mayor, that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any mayor in the room? I have a couple things, but I'll try to be real quick. Uh, just, I don't want to beat it to death. I just wanted to make a brief comment on the Belford Redevelopment Plan. Um, just to echo what my colleagues are saying, it is a, it is a really fantastic start, um, you know, and uh, it's going to be a long haul, but def definitely looking forward to seeing it come to fruition, and I, now I think we will be confident that the first steps are being taken. Um, one of the things the mayor and I were able to do last weekend was, we did a couple, actually it was the weekend before, we did a lot this, this spring, very busy. Um, we visited the fire academy for the uh, LDH drill, which is the large diameter hose drill, which is a very, very large exercise. It's very impressive. Um, and uh, again, one of the things I and I've been down there so many times, but one of the things I really wanted to remark on is the intense training that our volunteer firefighters undergo. One of the drills that I had never seen before that really left quite an impression on me um, was basically the trainees simulate being locked and um, you know, a smoke-filled room in the dark, and they need to find the lost man. And uh, that certainly left an impression on me, but it really gave me um, uh, I'm very grateful and such confidence in our firefighters and um, how, how hard and intensely they train. And uh, just on that note, I know our burn building is finally going to be finished, and we're gonna have that, that new addition is um, 
finally completed, and I think we're going to have a walkthrough on it soon, so they'll be able to do uh, even more intense and fantastic training, really leading the way for a lot of the volunteer fire departments in, um, in the county, and probably the state of New Jersey as well. Um, I was also invited down to Link Rock for a career day, and again, just to echo what my colleagues were saying, we just love interacting with the kids of this town, and um, it's just a wonderful opportunity, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, another thing I, I got a chance to do, I know Committee Ms. Fiore was able to do it as well. I had a ride along with the uh, Port Mom and EMS. Again, it was a very intense experience. That seems to be the, the, the word of tonight. I went on four calls, uh, spent the evening uh, with these fine people, and again, uh, I just have to convey how grateful I am to have um, such such well-trained and dedicated volunteers in our community that are literally dedicated to saving people's lives. Um, I'm going to leave the course of our car show to the mayor. And the, uh, the only other thing I did want to mention is a project that, again, at last is coming to fruition. You can see this outside. The mayor might talk a little bit more about it. Um, through a grant that we got uh, from the New Jersey State, uh, hi, was it the license plate program? Yes. Yeah. Uh, $5,000 grant, uh, recurrent grant, we're going to be doing walking tours through the Village Historic District. So this was a long time coming. Uh, a lot of work involved. It, unfortunately, the first one was canceled due to the bad weather that we had over the weekend, but I think the, new, the next one will be scheduled for June 10th. So uh, they are free, and uh, there's a beautiful brochure that you can pick up that goes along with it. So enough out of me this evening, Mayor. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, in fact, just going to piggyback off of that, and that, Deputy Mayor Murray is a little bit uh, too modest now. She's really the you know motivating force behind the uh, historic house tour. She's been talking for years about how we really have to uh, sort of uh, get more out of our historic heritage here and, and make it more of an attraction. And I think we're well on our way to it with this. And I think the response was pretty good, if I'm not mistaken except for the monsoon we had on Saturday, uh, it would have been quite a turnout, so we're hoping to get that rescheduled soon. And, uh, you know, especially King's Highway here, uh, you know, I always say to my students at Mana, there are kids in Nebraska who learn about things that happen along King's Highway here, uh, about the Monmouth and the, the, you know, the, the uh, retreat there by the British. So uh, it really is a special place, and I think it's one of the best kept secrets, which is not a good thing in this case. So. Uh, we're hoping to get it more of a more exposure, and I think this is the first step in that uh, in that hope. Uh, I've gone to a bad number of uh, Eagle Scouts that are only five, I think, within the last three weeks for Troop 246, and uh, it really is a credit. I always really want to make a point of giving these uh, young men a shout out because you know the papers are full of all kinds of nasty stories about you know shenanigans that kids get into. So when they do the right thing and really stick with something. And, uh, and follow through, they really deserve a lot of credit. And uh, it really is an honor and pleasure to go to every one of these. And if my schedule allows, I really try and get to as many as I can. So uh, congratulations to them. Um, as I mentioned, as uh, Deputy Murray, uh, Deputy Mayor Murray, boy, um, mentioned that you know, we had a rainy Saturday and it really wiped out a lot of things. The farmer's market for one, uh, the historic house tour, and uh, and, oh, and the Veterans Street Sign uh, dedication, which uh, we're going to try and reschedule probably in May or uh, end of May or June, uh, certainly before the summer. And I'm really excited about that one because it's World War One KIAs and one Revolutionary War uh, KIA. So we're really excited about that. Um, the oh, since the last meeting too, we had both Little League parades and. Uh, through the kindness of uh, Deputy Chief Dollinger, I was able to get to both of them. And uh, Link Cross was first, and uh, MOI was uh, followed. And it was on a cloudy day, and the rain held off just long enough. And it was great to see so many young people taking uh, part in the leagues this year. And from what I understand from both leagues, uh, registration is up, and that's a good sign and a good trend. We hear so much about kids sitting at home texting and you know, zoning out in front of uh, electronic gadgets, and it's good to see them out and playing sports like that. Um, we had a meeting with uh, the Frames program, and you know, it's, it's sort of a complicated uh, initiative. Uh, but what it will do is develop a map uh, 
with uh, sea level rise and you know all sorts of um, catastrophic events, what would happen if sea level rose, you know, by 2050, six inches, a foot, whatever. And it's a it's a great tool, and you know you can do it out about you know the causes and all of that stuff. But um, it's good to be prepared. It's good to have a sense of, of what we're facing in the coming years. And uh, so very excited about that, and very honored to be part of that whole uh, initiative. Uh, I don't know if people have been driving past the Pathmark Shopping Center, and they have to get another name for it. What's, what's the name? Middle Town Plaza. And uh, I, I think it's almost done. The uh, parking lot, I went to get a bagel, and my feelings didn't come loose on the way out. Uh, so it's, they did a fantastic job. I think it's probably about 90% complete, and it really makes a world of difference along that stretch of 35. So we're very excited for the Bodies coming in and Bed Bath and Beyond and a couple of the other smaller shops. And uh, I think we're going to be scheduling a, an official ribbon cutting in the coming weeks. So really a, a good thing for Middletown as a whole. Um, Best months of hell. Yeah, yeah, boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I put it down in my <laughs> I grew up in the town and neighborhood, so I appreciate that. Uh, the Deputy Mayor and I hosted a, uh, or were guests at a meeting of the Oak Hill Association, and it was great. We had a tremendous turnout, and it was really a, a great meeting. A lot of good dialogue back and forth, and uh, everybody left, I think, very happy. It was interesting enough, this one woman raised her hand and said, you know, I hear Red Bank is going to be a sanctuary city. And, you know, that was an easy one for me to dodge because it's not our, uh, our municipality. And it was interesting uh, that at the Middletown meeting, one of the complaints was about another town, you know. But um, just one, a little bit of an aside about sanctuary cities. I am shocked as somebody who's elected up here and takes an oath of office that there are people who take that same oath who will say, well, none of obey those laws. I, I think it's ridiculous, and I'm very proud of everybody up here that nobody, no matter how much you disagree with the law, would ever think of embarrassing the town or the municipality by saying, we're just not going to obey it. You know, it, it's shocking to me. And, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm just a different type, but um, I could never, in good conscience, having taken that oath, willingly and publicly state that I will not obey one of the laws of the federal government, the state, the county, whatever. And uh, finally, the... Uh, Unfortunately, we had another overdose victim this week, and this is very, you know, becoming all too commonplace. Not certainly not just in Middletown, but all over the state. You read the obituaries, you see a twenty-something person, and you start to wonder, gee, was this another one? And I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I'm glad to see the governor getting behind the opiate uh, initiative, and uh, I know the chief and I are on the municipal alliance. And uh, our police department does a fantastic job. We're on the phone about a lot about this. Uh, they're very aware of what's going on. They're very aware of some of the trouble spots that they keep an eye on. Uh, but it's a frightening thing. Anybody who's got kids or young adults at home, and I have uh, I have a 26 year old and a 19 year old, and not wood there, you know, on the straight and narrow. But uh, not everybody is that fortunate, and it really is a scary prospect for what's out there. And you know what? It's one of those things you can't do once and hope you dodge a bullet. Um, it's one of those things that, um, you know, once could be once too many. So, um, you know, we're hoping to, uh, that there's going to be something out there that between enforcement, stopping the supply at the border, and uh, everything put together, that we start to get a handle on this. But it is a frightening prospect. Um, and last but not, not least, certainly, uh, and on a happier note, Middletown Matters. Uh, many of you may have gotten them in the mail. It's certainly in the mail now. I got mine, I think, uh, Saturday. And uh, it really is worth reading cover to cover. There's a lot of great information, a lot of good news in town, too. That doesn't always you know, get the exposure it should. And we're very happy with it, uh, very proud. Crime has dropped yet again uh, for the seventh year in a row. Uh, front page is the budget news about the tax decrease. That's right, folks, decrease. And uh, a lot of other good news. So we're very, very proud of it. I hope everybody reads it and uh, gets a lot out of it. So with that, I'm going to take a breath and uh, turn it over to public comment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there any members of the, if you want to speak, uh, please keep in mind uh, five minutes and state your name and address for the uh, 
for the record, okay? Okay, seeing no further members of the public come forward, we will close the public portion and move for adjournment. Second. Mayor Yes. Mayor Yes. Yes. Deputy Mayor Yes. Mayor Yes. Yes.